What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcade video. On this one today, we're we'll going to be talking about arcade furniture. That's right, you heard it here. Custom cabinets. That is what I aim to do. We're going to be talking about this right here, known as the gun cart for Project Cabinet. Custom. Cut, 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 cut. Custom. Now you know the drill, if you are a subscriber or new to the channel, you know I always say it, be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP, you gotta put that underscore, that underscore, even if you Google Vic space VP, I still come up, but be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP on all the socials, I posted the link tree in the description, as always I am a broken record, but I can't stress it enough, be sure to follow all the socials, because if you did, you would have seen everything, it's not you would have, you will, you will see everything as far as what's going on here and as far as what we're talking about today with this whole custom arcade furniture idea that Project Canada reached out to me and said, hey Vic man, I need your help. Now if you don't know who Project Canada is, I do mention him quite a few times and obviously you will see videos on my channel known as Project Canada. He is still to date the person that has the most insane build I have ever done with the Bivik Ultimate Arcade 4 player. He's got the active marquee, he's got 42, almost now 43 terabytes. We're still in communication. He's an awesome dude. I never say actual names or Instagram handles. I never say the customer's names and all that just for protection. But if you ever hear me say Project Canada, you know who I'm talking about. Awesome dude, he's great. He's one of those people that turn from like a customer to like a friend, reaching out, hitting me up, texts me, you know, sees all like the Instagram videos, like, hey, I see the kiddo, and he's got a kiddo, and then he's like, hey, Vic, what do you do with your kiddo on Sundays? Like, it's, it's cool. I do like customers that turn friends. Everybody to me is a friend, uh, whether you are new or old subscribers, everybody is a friend to me, um, but it's just kind of cool to see like a customer keep going and becoming a friend, and also, not to mention, ordering more stuff. So, as real quick, we are talking about Project Canada. You can see here, this is the next set of videos that will be coming out. We are talking about this one right here. So, he does have his custom arcade furniture that we're going to be talking about today. And he's got a V pin. I'm going to be basically putting this on a pallet. We're going to create it all together in one, and it's going to Canada. So, be sure to stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of videos. We're going to be talking about a lot of his V pin and also the V pins behind me. We're going to be doing a comparison video. I'm going to put these side by side. He's got certain specs, then this one's got certain specs, and then that one's got different specs. There's a lot of V-pin videos to come up. Again, um, it's just awesome. Uh, you know, people reaching out, people are inquiring about builds. I am a busy guy. And just remember, keep in mind, all this, it is a hobby first and then a business second. I just love what I do. I, I you know, like I say, if you follow the Instagram and you watch the stories, you see it from a sheet of wood to like final product, it's it's insane. It's a different it's it it's it's an amazing feeling, honestly. But enough of that. On this one today, we're gonna be talking about a new I don't even know. <laughs> uh we're, I'm calling it arcade furniture. That's what I'm calling it. I'm dubbing it as arcade furniture. So you know, it doesn't have to actually have a computer in it, it doesn't have to have a system in it, it doesn't have to have controllers in it. Basically, it is furniture for a game room. I'm going to be telling you exactly what is happening here, why is this made, and again, the big thing is that it is custom made. That is what I am loving. That is what I am loving to do. When I say custom, now that I'm able to cut my own cabinets and I do everything myself and I don't have to rely on a third party to cut stuff, I can't really say to that extent, whatever I can cut, you know, if you need metal, like I have Eric Big E Productions, I have to rely on a third party there, but it's more about like, hey Vic, I got an idea, what do you think, can we make it happen, and boom, that to me is custom. So I do feel like the best way to start this video is to kind of understand the purpose of it, okay? Again, Project Canada, if you have not seen the videos on Project Canada, go watch it real quick and then come back. And you're going to see the one big thing that I noticed even during the build. The dude has a lot of controllers. I'm not talking like Xbox One controllers, no. 
If you don't know what I'm talking about, you did not watch the video, so go watch the video. If you did, you would have known all the controllers the guy has. He does have four Xbox One controllers. He does, I, yeah, it was six. He has six 8 bit controllers. He's got two Jolt light guns. He's got two Guitar Hero guitars. And, I mean, we can't put it on the cart. They're actually so heavy, they're professional grade, and it's amazing. He's got two DDR dance pads, not like the BS foldable mat thing that I have. He's got like the professional grade stuff. Now, if you watch that video, I did put a shelf. There is a built-in shelf behind the TV on the Bybit cabinet that I do now for all my cabinets. But even when I was setting that up, I said to him, I was like, dude, there's a lot of controllers. So sure enough, he got the cabinet. And then when we were getting ready to start the V-pin, he gave me a heads up. He goes, hey, Vic Man, you were right. We got a lot of controllers, I need your help. Do you think you could make me kind of like a shelf unit, something nice to go with my game room, my cabinet? And I said, yeah, let's, let's do it. Brainstorm, we, we brainstormed together. He came up with the idea. He basically said, hey Vic, here's my idea. I want such and such dimensions, and I just wanted to hold controllers. I was like, all right, I'm down to try it. Now, if I remember correctly, he wrote it. He texted it to me, he's like, I need a gun cart. So that's why I'm calling it the gun cart. I already posted pictures on Instagram, Facebook and all that and people are already asking me for pricing on this, which is cool. But I feel like people, um, you know, again, a picture is a picture. You just see this and this is why I make the videos because I like to explain. A lot of people are thinking that there's an actual computer in this and uh, somebody already reached out to me and said, hey, will you remake it? And then I wrote to them like, hey, this is just furniture like it's just a cabinet there's no actual system to it and I'm waiting for his reply to see if he wants to do a system I might have I might have tackled on to a whole different realm again in this video and in this kind of scenario I'm calling it arcade furniture basically it is meant it is furniture to hold his controllers whether it be Xbox controllers whether it be his guitar hero controllers whether it be the Jolt light guns I mean we thought of everything. So now that you understand the purpose of the cabinet and why it's made, kind of like, hey Vic, I have this problem, what do you think a solution is? This is what we came up with. And I always like to say the word we. I'm not gonna say I came up with it. This is a brainstorming kind of thing. As you can see, it is on casters. It's basically, I have an idea, he had an idea, how can we make both the ideas work out? And as you can see, it worked. He did request 360 vinyl wrap, just like his arcade cabinet and just like his virtual pinball machine. It's got wrap everywhere, on the rear, on the top, which I'm gonna discuss later on, which was a challenge for the top. The sides, the gun panel, even the door panel and the inside of the door has vinyl. So again, you as a customer, you could message me anything you want, tell me dimensions that you want, that is why it's custom. That is what I aim for. When I say the word custom, I want it custom. He gave me the basic kind of footprint. He goes, hey Vic, I want it this long, this deep, this wide. What do you think? And then I'm also the type to make sure that it is still a structurally sound cabinet. You know, originally, I'm gonna take you closer, kind of like this top panel was the original idea of how deep we wanted it. But then I did tell him like, it's kind of an easy tip if, you know, if we go a little bit deeper, as you can see, I'm able to wheel this around and I'm not pushing it, I'm not tilting it. I do have wires and stuff on the floor, kind of like my little vinyl stuff that catches the caster a little bit. But again, there's just so many things. You as a customer, let me know what you want. Uh, my job is to see if I could do it, number one, and then also bring it to kind of a reality. And that's, that's what we got here. Now we'll work our way from the top down. I'm gonna show you real quick He's got these little figurines that hold his controllers. This is kind of like how it started. This is how we figured out the dimensions of the actual top piece here. I right now have like, you know, a little Mario and I have my little MSI Dragon. He's not, he doesn't have these. I just wanted to put these to show you and give you an idea of, you know, perspective and depth and how big they are. But basically, as you can see in the picture, he has these four figurines, very cool figurines that are actually holding his controller. I think he's got like Crash Bandicoot holding a controller. Pretty cool, he's basically put them side by side and then measured down and said, hey Vic, they're this wide, let's go with that. Honestly, you don't need the figurines, you could just leave the controls like that. The big thing though, when I was building it, I said to myself, I did want to put a ledge. I 
did want a ledge on this. I didn't want to leave it flat because in case you kind of knock it over, this right now, as you can see, controllers can't fly off and such. And again, as you reel around, I don't really want it to kind of fall. My Mario is kind of top heavy, so if I do kind of go real quick, you know, he'll wobble. But that's statue, that's not me. We're gonna be discussing artwork later on, but the big deal with this kind of ledge thing, and you'll see later on, the artwork. I'm so happy with how it came out because I knew I was gonna make a ledge. I did have to adjust, and I've never done it before, but basically I have artwork on the shelf and then up vertically on the ledge. I've never done that, so I'm giving myself a pat on the back. It was not easy. Uh, it was definitely a tough piece of artwork. But let's now go on down. Let's talk about the gun panel. So the gun panel is pretty cool. I knew that in the design again with that ledge, I knew I'm going to have here about a three inch ledge here and it kind of worked out for the customer. As you can see, it does have a quote here and it's got a main picture on the panel. The big thing that you don't see is that the actual guns are inside of a holster. I do have a gun holster inside. So there are two holsters. You do have the wood cutout, but there's an actual gun holster inside to keep that gun in place. I'm gonna give a big shout out to Big E Productions, Eric and Ray RPEG Electronics. Ray RPEG Electronics supplied me the gun holster. He did have a pair, I didn't get it for free, I bought it, and I also reached out to Big E because I asked him, I said, hey man, the customer has jolts, and I don't know if you have these gun holsters, you ever had gun holsters with the jolts, and Big E said, yes, these holsters will work with the jolt light guns and then ray also confirmed and said yeah Vic, i have two of them actually do you want them and then i bought them so again i have aim tracks but the gun holster as you can see does hold my aim track and it does hold also the jolt the jolt light gun in all honesty is almost identical in dimensions of the aim track i think it's just a little bit wider maybe a little bit longer too but the big thing is that i knew i had to put gun holsters to keep that gun nice it's got to look good you only see the wood cut. You only see this. And my original intention was maybe you don't need the gun holster. Maybe we could just cut the wood and you just kind of leave the gun dangling. I tried it. It kind of was like floppy. You know, the gun would sit here and then it would sit up. And then when you move, the gun might fall through. And this is, this is just clean. I do like how this is. Now, also, I don't know if you see it. I will bring you in closer. But the big thing, and again, these are wired guns. We want to try to keep it a nice presentable piece of furniture. I did have to make a little notch underneath each gun to tuck in the wire. Again, this is a door panel here. If I didn't put this notch here, we would have crushed wire. So it's pretty cool. I have it well hidden, you know, kind of like, I basically put a slit in the vinyl. There is a hole, you know, there's obviously a hole, um, but I do put a slit in the vinyl to not have it as a gaping hole. And honestly, the vinyl also helps to keep it in place while you're opening and closing the door. So it's just little details. That's, that's what I'm getting at. It's little details that completed. It is, it's beautiful. Now, before I go into opening the door, let's talk about the side panel here. This is awesome. You got two sides. And as far as determining the height of the cabinet, I based it on the height of the guitar. And as you can see, the guitar is Awesome, it is leveled off, it's not touching the floor, no connections, no wires are on the floor, nothing is dragging, it's just a beautiful thing when you see it. So he found, the customer found these, these awesome Guitar Hero holders on Etsy. I'll try to reach out to him and I'll post it in the description down below, but he did find these holsters, awesome. Customer supplied it, it worked out great. And what's really cool with these holsters, as you can see like my Guitar Hero, controller I have the strap I don't think he has the strap but basically you could always put the strap on the hook and then drop the guitar in what I like about these holes is that that guitar it's not going nowhere like it won't it won't like it won't vertically go up and down it will slide a little bit but it's not gonna go up and down so it's kind of like if you're moving it's not like it's just waving in the wind and smacking onto the cabinet no it's those holes are great and yes as you can see when you do remove the guitar, he does have a quote, it's a Bon Jovi quote, he's got a Bon Jovi logo on it, and it works. The side panels are identical, the same exact artwork is there, so we'll swing it around. And luckily, I do have my other Guitar Hero guitar. And again, the big thing is that you want to put the strap on. If I let the strap dangle, now you've got the strap touching the floor, obviously. 
I mean, let's, let's, let's be real. Let's not be dumb. But you just kind of tuck it in and boom, it drops in. That is what's awesome. It's so tight to the wall. It's awesome. And as you can see, like I said, you might get a little bit of a swing left and right. It's not to do anything now, but basically what I'm getting at is my personal party cade that I have actual like guitar hooks from like Amazon. Every time I move my party cade, the guitars are just like, like just flat, they're flapping around. They're like going like vertical and, and they kind of bang onto the cabinet. So these right here, beautiful. And now Project Canada, awesome dude. He's big on like, I guess he moves his cabinets around a lot. When he first got his ultimate arcade, he showed me where he put it. And it was in the middle of the room. So I did understand the need for artwork in the rear. He obviously wanted artwork here because hey, it might move around. You know, I don't know where he's gonna put this. I don't know if he's gonna put it next to his cabinet. Maybe it might be, you know, a couple of feet away. But yes, we did put artwork on the rear. Artwork is artwork, he supplied all the artwork and then I kind of just adjusted it around. This was an awesome piece, it's very retro. If you look very carefully at it, there's just a bunch of retro kind of, um, what's the wording? I don't know, retro stuff. Coming from like movies and games, there's like a Game Boy, there's like a Pizza Hut box and Rugrats and Shrek and it's just like 90s, that's, that's what it is. And the big thing when it came to this piece here, Basically, when it comes to artwork, if I have, let's say, for example, I don't know, a five foot by six foot piece, you know, I have to actually make the artwork a little bit bigger to allow for bleed. He said, Vic, you can't do any bleed on this. I, I, you can't adjust. Basically, if I did have bleed, some of the logos, like Kirby, would be cut. I have ways of doing that. Basically, I add a black border for the bleed. There is a chance that you might see the black border, which honestly it is at the bottom. Not too bad, but everything else is clean. So he's like, Vic, you can't. Don't chop up this image. I'm okay with the black border. I says, as long as you record the black border, we're good to go. Now, the one big thing I do want to talk about is the door. The door. This is awesome. I'm, I'm not, uh, what's the wording? Because I, I mean, I cut cabinets, so you could count me as a carpenter. But the big thing is that when it comes to these, like, openings and I have to put a door, it's like, it's, it's a challenge for me. So... Check it out real quick. Let's talk about the door itself here, okay? Beautiful. Again, artwork here, as you can see, it is two separate pieces of artwork, not to mention this gun panel. It's one solid piece, even when it comes up to the ledge. So when I do the applying, you know, I got my squeegee here, and then I make sure I tuck down and up. It's, it's vinyl. It's, it's, it's a challenge. So you can see here the door is here. You can definitely see the slit here. You have to have that slit. It's, it's impossible to not have that. But basically... When I was doing the door, number one, I made sure that the door could open and close. But the hardest thing is that when you start adding T-molding, now that T-molding does come out a little bit over the door. When I was doing the door, I didn't want to put a handle. I feel like putting like a handle, it's just like, it, it didn't look right. So what I did do is that I did do the push magnetic door. That's awesome. <laughs> it is a push button right here, so it's kind of like, I don't know, you find that at Home Depot. You basically just gotta push in. The only thing I will admit, it did look good on the camera there, but for the customer, you might just have to kind of push it. You know, sometimes you push it and it might not open. You just gotta kind of really give it a good push. And the best thing is that your artwork, it's got like these two white squares. You literally do that and you have a good, I would say a good 90% chance it will open. Now we got the door open, check it out again. Vinyl everywhere, vinyl everywhere. We got vinyl on the rear. You could see that this is the magnetic piece for the latch there. It's awesome. Now, not to mention, he's got an inside cabinet. It does have a shelf inside of this. I right now do have the wires just kind of chilling here. Let me bring him closer. So now as you can see from there, this is why we do need the little notch out. So I'm gonna remove the notch here. And as you can see, like I said, vinyl is covering it. Vinyl also does help it because again, he's got jolts. My aim track is a single cord. His is gonna have the braided cord that really, is, it's a little bit thicker than the aim track. So I do have this hole a little bit bigger. Again, I unfortunately don't have the jolts with me, but I have that hole big enough that it will actually fit um, like one of these, like the three prong wires. So it'll be fine. Now the big thing is I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it for him um, or he's just gonna get it on his own. 
Right now I do have the wires kind of like just chilling. So I kind of wrapped it and then I put it. But Amazon does have this nice kind of wall mounted like hanger that you could basically just kind of, you know, twirl it around. That's where like this notch out is perfect. And basically you put it on the wall, you wrap your cord, and then again, you close the door. If I did not have these notch outs, that cord is just gonna, it's just gonna bend. It's gonna be awful. But as you can see, like I said, it's kind of a, a little bit of a, of a challenge, nothing major, but I feel like it's gonna be broken in. Honestly, it's because of the T molding. It comes out a little bit, but it's awesome. Also, I did give them a shelf. I put T molding on the shelf. The actual inside, I had to actually do this. I spray painted it black. You can see here the wood here, even on the sides, that's like your regular beige wood that I use. And I didn't want, like, imagine that. Like, imagine I left it like this beige. I just wound up spray painting the entire thing black. And I like, I like everything about it. Now, also, I'm going to take it real quick. I even went to the extent of spray painting the door edge. Just little details. That's it. So you do see my birch, it is laminated birch. You can see like the birch design. You can't really put vinyl on this because it doesn't stick on this, but just little details to make sure it's clean. So now let's talk about the actual artwork itself. If you do notice, this actual artwork has nothing to do with his actual arcade cabinet. He's got like a madman, red, white, black theme. And as you can see, this one has like Harley Quinn on it. It's got a other character that I don't know, um, like the the girl, like Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever her name, <laughs> whatever her name is. Um, it's just awesome. The customer did supply the artwork. I went in, I kind of helped him out. He did find this image of Harley Quinn, but like the background, he had we had to basically extend it up for the logo here. A lot of stuff. It's just basically he he supplied the artwork. Um, I helped a little bit, you know, kind of as far as fine tuning it and adjusting backgrounds, but I would say the artwork is 99% his. I do want to bring you in close though to show you the actual shelf piece I'm talking about. So now real quick, as you can see, I actually let Canada know, I said, hey dude, I'm going to do something with the shelf, but I can't guarantee it's going to work because it's, it's just, it's a very difficult thing. So as you can see, he did a very good idea and great job with choosing kind of like the step and repeat where it basically is just like the same image repeated. It worked out great, but the big thing I want you to see is the actual edging that comes up vertically on the edge. It is a very difficult cut. Again, this is a basic rectangle piece that I get. I basically had to cut the corner and then kind of do like a present fold just to get this to stick downwards. And I knew, I said to myself, I like, I need, I, you know, it, it's just black. And then not to mention this vinyl here is actually hiding screws. Even on the, the gun, the gun panel, there are screws being hidden. And no, I don't do like, I don't put, um, I don't put like a compound over the screws and then sand it because in the event that you have to actually disassemble this, you know, finding a screw is a nightmare. But basically right here is actually 12 screws and the vinyl helps hide it. Um, I'm just happy with how it came out. T-molding cut along everywhere, so every every side panel got T-molding. And now just to tell you, and you can see it, yes, there is two screws here. And there's two screws here. Yes, you do see like the dimple in the vinyl. Again, you can't do anything unless you actually putty it and then sand it so it's flat. There's no real way to hide that. The screw is in the wood, but you still kind of get that little bit of an outline, but it's nothing major. It's kind of like one of those things where I told you about it and now you could see it. But all in all, amazing. Well guys, there you guys have it. The first ever arcade piece of furniture. <laughs> that doesn't have a system in it, doesn't have joysticks on it, it's, just, it's furniture for your controllers and your game room. So there you have it. Stay tuned. A lot of videos. This V pin is a thing of beauty, just like all the other V pins. We're going to be doing a lot of videos on this. This has a lot of add ons compared to my build that also is in this build. And this one has different add ons than Project Canada. 
A lot going on, stay tuned. I do have a lot of VPN stuff. Even doing the side by side comparison of the 42 inch C2 OLED versus the 50 inch QNED. Woo! VVP. Game case arcades. Sheesh.